So I'm going to go over how to file for TPS using the My USCIS account. Um, so to begin, you'll log in to the My USCIS account um, or help clients log in, and then you'll click file a form online. Um, once you've gotten to this page, you'll click, um, you can type in TPS, which is form I-821. Um, so here they let you know that you can concurrently file for a work permit at the same time. Um, this will be a selection at the beginning of the TPS application um, where you can select whether you want to file for a work permit at the same time. So click start form. Here they'll go over all the background um, beginning with eligibility. Um, so to be able to file for TPS, they're making sure that you're el from an eligible country um, and they let you know that the filing fee is $50 um, and you must file during the registration dates for the country that you're from. Um, that the in that there's also an $85 biometrics fee. Um, it's important to note that if you have a client who needs to file for a fee waiver, the application must be done um, in paper and you have to file a fee waiver form with it. So again, it's not possible to file for a fee waiver online. Um, let's see, they talk about the biometrics and then they talk about um, after you submit your application, you're able to track your case online um, and you may need to respond to any RFIs or RFEs, um, which is requests for further evidence um, or information, and then you'll receive a decision. So the online form is broken up um, into different sections. There's the getting started section, there's background on your client, and there's um, <clears throat> you provide additional evidence. Um, um, and they ask a lot of immigration and criminal questions. So we'll get into that when we start the form. But um, all the answers are automatically saved for 30 days. So you can leave the application and come back. Um, but after 30 days, the application is erased. So here's more background, Paperwork Reduction Act. And once you've read through this, you can start the form. So as you can see on the left-hand side, there's the main sections, which is getting started about you, your family, basis of eligibility, additional information, and then review and submit. Um, if you file, if you answer the second question, which is um, that you're applying for a work permit together with your I-821, they'll attach that application on to the end of this one after you um, sign it. So, um, so for this demonstration, we'll show that. So we're going to say initial and then <clears throat> you'll put in what country that you're from or your clients from. Um, and so this is the list of all the countries that have TPS currently. Um, and then here we're going to say, yes, I'm requesting an EAD. Um, so here they'll explain that after you sign your form 821, it will be locked and you can't move, you can't go back and edit it. And, but then you will be moved on to the employment authorization form. Here, they're asking if someone's assisting. Next, we'll move on to the about you section. Um, this is the general information that they request for all these applications. Let's see. So they'll include contact information here. Next, they'll ask when and where you were born. They ask your gender, ethnicity, race, height and weight, um, the color of your eyes, the color of your hair. And here they ask what countries you lived in before the United States, the country, your country of citizenship or nationality, when you last entered the United States and where, um, and they ask your immigration status when you entered the United States. So here you're able to type in, um, you can type in 
what the status is and it'll come up with the actual number. So so maybe you applied, you're a client, applied for asylum and they're an alien waiting decision of asylum. Maybe they're a visitor, um, temporary visitor for pleasure or for business. So here it takes a little bit of um, just typing in what you may think that they are and then um, looking through. Here you'll put the I-94. And if um, if you don't have an I-94, you can search I-94 on Google, I'll show you here. Um, and it will take you to the Department of Homeland Security website. Um, where you'll click get most recent I-94. Acknowledge and agree. And here you put in um, first and last name, birthday, passport number, and the country of citizenship. And that will generate the I-94. I'd recommend saving that as a PDF so you can upload it later in the application. Um, so next, okay, we're on page two, as you can see about your Im immigration information. Um, so here's the, uh, the expiration date on your I-94, and that's how long you're allowed to stay in the United States legally. Um, passport number, um, travel document number, if anyone has them. Um, the country that issued, so this is other passport questions. Okay, so here's your current immigration status or lack of immigration status. So here they have the same list as they did um, regarding what your immigration status is when you entered. Um, they ask if you're now or ever were in immigration proceedings. And then here they ask your A number, which can be found on any receipt notices. Some clients or individuals will not have A numbers yet. Um, They'll ask for a social security number. And in this application, they don't give you the option of applying for a social security number. Although if you included the work permit um, filing concurrently, then you'll be able to request a social security number in that application. Um, here they ask your USCIS online account number. Many people won't have this, um, but if you do have it, it would be on the receipt number, on the receipt notice. So here we move into family, they ask marital status and about your children. Um, so this is important to note that you only need to enter the information about your children if you're filing a late initial application for TPS. So this would mean that you're outside of the registration date, but you are filing your first TPS application. Um, Okay, so here they begin the immigration eligibility questions, and this is where the application gets a little bit more complicated, um, or they just have more detailed questions. So um, let's see. So this is asking about if um, if you are the guardian or accompanying an individual who's inadmissible due to sickness, physical, mental disability, or inf infancy. Um, they ask if you have any like diseases um, and any mental or physical behaviors that may be a threat to the United States or the safety or welfare of the United States. Um, there's country of nationality. Um, this is when you enter the United States and how long you preside in the United States and if you've had any other countries that you've had um, habitual residence in. So here are the immigration violation questions. So make sure to go through these carefully and make sure that they're answered, they're all answered um, correctly um, and accurately. Um, let's see, immigration. So these are pretty straightforward. Um, so if you answer yes to any of these questions, make sure at the end, um, when you get to the inf additional information section that you explain um, the reason for any of these. So these are immigration violation questions still. So I'll move on. Have you entered the United States as a stowaway? Um, so this is asking about false documentation and other immigration violations here. So go through these carefully and make sure that these are all no's or if they're a yes, then explain at the end. I will demonstrate when we get there. Um, 
Okay, so this so we moved on to the affiliations subsection. Um, they ask if you're part of a member of the communist or any other totalitarian party. Um, is there other questions about group affiliations? Again, if any of these are yeses, it's important to explain in the additional information section. And this is page two of these types of questions, it's asking about military involvement, um, working in any jails, using weapons, military involvement. Okay, and this is about controlled substances and trafficking. Um, this is more about trafficking. Um, here they ask if you have been convicted of any felony in the United States, any misdemeanor, any serious crime in or outside the United States. It's important if this is a yes and it's a political crime to explain that in the additional information section, or if you click yes, they'll give you an option here. Um, if this is not enough space, though, can you can continue. Um, have you ever committed or, let's see, political other than a purely political offense. Okay, um, so this is more about other crimes, controlled substances. Um, so if you've been convicted of two or more criminal offenses and you've been um, jailed for more than five years. Okay. So here they're asking you about crimes committed outside of the United States. So they exclude minor traffic violations. Um, it's important to know. Um, this is continuing to ask about laws. Have you ever received a pardon, amnesty, okay, immunity, non-political? Okay. So if all of these are no's, then not much more needs to be done um, in these sections. Let's see espionage okay so just read through these very carefully um it's asking about terrorism let's see okay and then we move on to the moral character section so we're out of the crime and offenses subsection um so here's about trafficking um Let's see. They're asking about trafficking and prostitution um, and other controlled substances and drug related questions. These are continuing in the moral character section questions. And then trafficking, money laundering. Okay, so once you've gone through those questions and make sure that you double check them, um, though you'll enter the evidence section. So here it's proof of identity and nationality. Here you may upload a path your passport and make sure you include all the pages. Um, it's important to note that the maximum file size is 12 megabytes. So you may need to break up the passport pages or um, any large documents into multiple smaller documents. Um, there's no limit on how many documents you can upload, although you can only drag five at a time. So you could drag five pages of the passport and then drag another five pages of the passport if you're doing it that way. Um, you can also include your birth certificate and photo identification with that birth certificate and or any other national identity document um, that includes your photo and or your fingerprint. So next, you'll upload proof of residence. Um, they take a lot of different forms of residence, but what's important is that um, that it includes your address and your name. So employment records, they're going to need your address, the exact periods, um, including any periods of layoff, your duties with the company, um, and they need to be signed by your employer. Um, 
You can provide rent receipts or utility bills, school records, medical records, um, attestations by churches or other organizations in in your residence um, that identify you by name. Um, you can do money orders, uh, passport entries, birth certificates of children born in the United States, um, social security card. So this is just anything that's going to really prove that you've been living in the United States. And the same goes for this one. It's a 12 megabyte maximum and the files have to be JPEG, PDF, or TIFF. So here is proof of entry. You can upload your passport cover to cover, your I-94, or any of the documents uh, lined in the proof of residence on the previous page. So what we just went over can be uploaded here to show proof of entry as well. Um, because if you're pro proving that you've been in the United States, you're also proving that you've entered. And the same thing goes for the file requirements, maximum 12 megabytes, JPEG, PDF, or TIFF files. Here, if you have any criminal history, this is the place where you'll upload the proof. Um, let's see, any copies from the court, any police reports. Um, let's see, and if you don't have these documents, you have to establish that they're not available to you. Um, let's see. So any secondary evidence might be available. <clears throat> And that should be uploaded as well. And the same thing goes with a file, 12 megabyte max and JPEG, PDF, or TIFF. So here you can <clears throat> add any additional information um, if you wanna add more about any crimes in the past or any of those other questions, you can do so here. Um, let's see, and if not, you can just go into next. Here, they will have you um, go through all your responses that may have issues. Here, they're telling us the filing fee is 135 because it's the $50 TPS and the biometrics. And the rest of that is the employment authorization application that we said that we were filing for. So once you review these and um, you'll be able to go to next where you'll be able to pay for both applications and sign and submit, and then you'll be able to begin the employment authorization process if you have selected to do that concurrently. Thanks.